today we're going to uh, have a go at our crankcase here and uh, see how our crankshaft checks out with our main bearings. Uh, some of them I've got put in place here. Uh, this half over here, I've already got things set up and ready to go. Also, uh, one tip here that might be helpful is to uh, number the back sides of these bearings uh, if you do this process, because what could happen if you uh, pull this top half of the case off after you do your bearing check, uh, depending on how things stick, you may have a little stickiness, a bearing could fall out or two could fall out. You wouldn't know exactly what position they'd be in if they weren't numbered on the back side. Let's take a quick look at a picture of that. And then uh, we'll go over a few important details uh, we want to be prepared for before we actually start this process. Because once, once we've concluded our bearing check, everything checks out, it looks okay, we're going to go ahead and start permanent assembly. So that means no more grinding, no more sanding, no more dirt around this crankcase at all. So since we've done the initial cleaning and prep work on our case half here, uh, or both halves, um, this has been covered up with plastic bag uh, throughout that process. I have thoroughly uh, blown out both halves uh, with 170 PSI compressed air. And then also uh, right down in these uh, oil galleys in here, we want to blow through those tips and get down in there uh, with an air hose. You can see a little bit of what's going on in there. Um, anyhow, uh, pressurized oil makes its way down in there and squirts through into the bearings there and then also through uh, to our oil squirters that were installed by Ollie's. So we just want to make sure that uh, with compressed air the galleys are clean and then also uh, running some brake cleaner through there is also not a bad idea. So we just want to rinse it down. We're going to be clean from here on out and that's pretty much going to be our last chance. So no more dust once we start fooling with bearings that's going to be it. So first thing I'm doing here is just checking our temperature range here to see uh, where we are. So anything extreme hot or extreme cold could affect your measuring. Uh, right now we're right at about 70 degrees which is the optimal range you would like to be in for something like this. And then just having a quick look at our part numbers here. So this is our uh, half shells for our main bearings and this is our half shell for rear main. So everything has been thoroughly cleaned already. Uh, all these have been wiped down with brake cleaner and alcohol and the same thing with our bearings just to make sure we don't have any kind of residue of anything on there. Just send that guy in there like that. Making sure your hole lines up with our, our oil galleys and then just taking a wooden shim like a straight edge and just, just tapping making sure it's centered. And then we just want to make sure we're seated down in there with our bearings back to front. Back looks pretty good there. Everything else looks to be seated in our front here. Okay, everything checks out okay. Let's go ahead and set up our plastic gauge. Okay, this is just a little bit tedious I'm trying to get this in here. So I'm just using a little bit of grease to stick it. This is one of those jobs where you just got to be real patient with it. Okay, let's have a quick look and see how we did there. So we're just hanging off the side of the journals. Um, and according to Wayne's book, that's how he likes it in there. I'm not really sure um, how much difference that's going to make, but let's go ahead and do it that way anyways. Okay, so then we're ready to drop our left crankcase half down. And so what I want to be careful for is uh, this stud right here. So this one is real close to our intermediate shaft bearing surface. Um, in this case we don't have bearings in here. Um, we're just using the surface of the crankcase. Uh, but you may have a bearing in yours depending on what uh, year you're working with or if this has been machined out. Um, the thing that can happen here is when you're dropping down if you're not careful where you're guiding it, this guy here can be banging into your bearing on this side. So we want to be really careful. We just pile it right down over this guy here and these two guys right here, that's basically going to be our guide and then we just want to gently press it in there. It's going to be real tight when we get to the back here with this back bearing, but uh, we'll just have to see how it goes.
Okay, we're in. Okay, so this is basically what we're putting back into place here. I'm using some old hardware that's uh, been cleaned up to just go through this process. We'll be using uh, some of the older hardware that's been refinished, and we'll be using new hardware when we put the case together uh, for the final run. But for now, this is basically what we're going to be putting into place. Okay, so I've got a page printed up here out of the manual. So uh, through bolts are going to be 25.3 approximately foot-pounds, and our uh, perimeter nuts and washers, 15.9 uh, to 18 pounds approximately. So let me just roll through here uh, quickly. Um, I'll just blast through them, get them into place, torque them down, and then we'll pull it apart and see what we got. Okay, so it almost looks like we got a real engine going here. Let's uh, let's get this thing broken apart and see what we got inside. Okay, so plastic hammer, I got some wooden shims and a uh, plastic spreader type bar we can just kind of wedge in there. Okay, and then looking at our left half here, so it looks like, uh, if anything, we're probably um, on the looser side here compared to our connecting rod bolts, which would make sense because we're just a lot bigger area that we have to uh, clamp down to, but everything looks to be real consistent. Real, real nice reading there. This one got smashed out pretty good, but we're still within our spec range there. So this one over here. Get that in there. All right, well, that looks pretty good there. Okay, so there it is uh, in a nutshell. We basically have um, our measurements that we were after. Uh, we can be confident now when we put this thing together. We're going to have proper uh, oil lubrication in all our bearings, connecting rods and main bearings. And I can see why this really isn't a, uh, a preferred method from uh, professional engine builders. It's a whole lot of work. It's a uh, Mediocre reading at best, uh, but it does give you some confidence that you're in the ballpark. Um, if you've got really good calibrated measuring tools and uh, you're really confident how to use them, then probably you could just bypass this and you would be just fine. Uh, but for a novice guy, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to do a dry run, put it together, and verify. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.